jacket. So tonight it's cold, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go to my coworker's house and uh, pick up some wood because our shop has a wood fire furnace, and we need wood to stay warm in there if we're gonna want to do anything out in the shop, which we need to because our projects. A lot of the stuff happens in the shop. So tonight we're going on a little adventure to go pick up some wood. How do you feel about it, Sam? Um, Cora? No good. <laughs> See, you're not excited. <laughs> Love wood. We all do. Hi, all right, let's go. So my coworker, he's moving soon, and he said he has a bunch of wood. So we're gonna go over to his place, pick up the wood, and uh, start being warm in the winter. Cause we uh, we definitely have a lot of projects that we want to do, and a lot of that stuff happens in the garage here. So we need heat. So oh man. I don't know if I have any gloves. Gloves would be really helpful. Anyways, we're gonna get loaded up. Sammy's in the truck already waiting because it's getting warm. Dang, I do not have gloves. I Man, growing up, having your own place, starting to do your own things, there's just some items you completely forget that you have not bought, in, like work gloves. Okay, well, we'll have to make do. All right, got the wood. There was actually a lot more than I thought there was gonna be. <laughs> so it's gonna take multiple loads, but it's pretty late right now. And uh, I'm just gonna dump it here in the back part of our property. And yeah, let's get to unloading this. <laughs> Well, it's, a, it's quite a bit, it's a few weeks after we got all the wood. You can see we had it all piled up here. You can see all the, the small pieces here, but now we've got it all stacked. <laughs> so now Cora can't go behind the shop here. And I kind of organized this so that way it's like big logs on this side, small sticks on that side. Should make it way easier to grab all of what we need. And we can also chop the bigger stuff to split it open but now we finally have wood we finally have good burning wood to heat the shop so we can get a bunch of fun projects going in there bigger stuff on this side smaller stuff on that side you can see i kind of messed up i was going to do all smaller stuff all the way up but then i kind of realized around here i was like shoot like there's not enough small stuff to be level so i like stacked some bigger stuff and then went back to the small stuff <sighs> but yeah that's what you get so yeah wood is done finally have some wood probably last us all winter because we really don't burn that much but it is so nice to have so that is the final update on the wood thanks <laughs> uh, so i'm so happy about that and it was all free that's the other thing we got it for free get a warm-up oh i'll show you over here because we were like tired of Cora going behind the shop. So we stacked up the wood over there and we just stacked up a little bit of wood over here to keep her from going back there. So yeah, now Cora can't go behind the shop. We have wood that we can burn. A lot of it's the smaller stuff, so we just easily throw that in and it's perfect. But look, I just noticed this. Holy moly, this white, <laughs> The clear coat on this truck is so bad. Is that water or is that just air? Holy smokes. Yeah, the clear coat on the truck is really bad. You can probably see it up here. Like, look at that. Look how bad that is. <sighs> I don't know what to do about that. Hey, maybe, maybe 
we'll make a vlog about painting the truck, try to do it ourselves, because I don't care too much about how that looks. And it kind of needs to get done, <laughs> but. All right, well, that's wood and a little bit of the truck. Move on to other stuff. <laughs> so some of you might know, I like to do sim racing stuff and my start out rig was a Logitech system, the Logitech G920, and it was okay, it was pretty good. But recently, finally got a chance and uh, came across some used items on on the interwebs and was able to pick up a new system, to, well, new to me. And thought I'd show it to you. It's this, the Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase. And then it's also got the standard pedals without the load cell brake kit. So then now, right now I just have a uh, potentiometer, gas and brake, um, that's okay. And then it also is, came with the uh, Porsche 918 wheel in there. Yeah, it was quite the adventure to get this thing. So we drove and got this, and while driving to get this, I had posted my Logitech stuff, and someone started texting me. Well, I posted Logitech stuff before I got there, and then while driving there, someone was messaging me about it. So within a day, basically drove, got this, drove home, and then sold my Logitech stuff. And holy smokes, this thing is so much nicer. I've had a little bit of a chance to play with it and it's a lot more powerful. It's a lot smoother because of the belt drive. The wheel is awesome. It's got a vibration motor in it. And so it's really easy to tell for like understeering and a few things like that. I really wish I had a clutch and shifter, but that stuff will come. But yeah, so it was a little bit of an adventure to get this mounted up. Um, it, there's a little triangle pattern at the bottom here, this stupid plate on my play seat challenge, it actually, you can't, the only place that you can play, put it in is like this, with the mount way up here and then the, the three bolts over there. Anything else in this bracket actually blocks the bolt holes. So, yeah, so I had to mount it like this, which means I had to like lay the seat down quite a bit, so that way it was actually a decent distance for your hands. But here's the issue is that um, there's quite a bit of play and flex. I don't know if you guys can see that. And even with the wheel on there, it's even worse. So one of the things I'm going to be doing here probably today is see about making a bracket, making a bracket that will come up right here to the front of this plate, probably bolt onto the bottom and then over here, come down on the other side of this pivot point. And hopefully with that bracket, it'll actually stiffen up everything a lot more and and help some of those flex issues. Uh, the pedals were also an interesting thing. I had to basically zip tie it, like zip ties down here and zip ties up the front in order to zip tie it to this frame. And then even then it's pretty far out already. So I might have to redo this at some point, but for now it works pretty decent. But I am loving it. I'll, once we make this bracket, I'll probably do a little bit of uh, footage with you guys of actually using it. But until then, I think let's go make that bracket. All right, well, here's some of the materials that we have. Uh, I have this 3 16 and it's like maybe half an inch or so, something like that. I have this bar and I've already made these little brackets. So what I'm thinking is, because it's tubes that go, it goes straight up, over, and then back. And so I can use these little brackets on each side of the tubes and then use this bar and just bend a bar that goes up, whoosh, bolts to the plate and then bends back down. And then I'll weld these tabs on each side, maybe try to put a little hole to zip tie them to or something to that effect. But so I just tried bending it and I'm making these little tabs that go around the tube. And I think I'm gonna start working on cutting this bar out and getting it bent into shape and going from there. Guess we'll see how this goes.
So it's been a little bit, but I finished up this brace. I think the batteries died. So painted it black. I put on these little tabs and then that one has some like plastic underneath it. So that way it can actually slide. So that way this can still like pop up and move. But this brace is done. Um, I just had it. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, so it's like bolted into the same three pattern for that, but it's kind of ugly. So don't really look at that. And it reduces a lot of slop. I mean, I'm going to be moving the whole chair. I will say that that mount over there, like that connection could stand to not have as much slop in it, but this bar helps so much. Like it's, it's kind of amazing how good it does. So now the entire wheelbase and that setup feels pretty good. I did snap off this on the chair, which kind of sucks, but we'll get past that. Still really want to clutch. We'll get to that. <laughs> but as of right now, at least it's, it's in, it's pretty sturdy and it's fun to use. So then next we have the Thrustmaster and Sparco sequential shifter and e-brake, which when we got it, this was bent pretty bad. Then we bent it back straight. Now it's on here for fun. Or I finally did get the software and verify that it is all working. Some of the bolts were a little loose. Like I realized these were just stops. After watching the Sim Racing Garage review, I realized that these bolts were not supposed to be loose. And so I tightened them really up really well. So that way, cause these just act as a stop for each side. There's two blocks with little springs. And I'm, eventually I might put in stiffer springs for there, but for fun, I actually just zip tied it to this uh, to this part of the chair and it was really floppy but it was kind of fun to use and work. So then recently I actually found this piece of uh, leftover acrylic and I got some U-bolts. I got a longer one up here as you can see, some extra bolts and then so a longer one up here because this bar is actually in further. Let's see if I can get a good shot. And then I just put another bolt in there to sandwich it I cut it all out and then on the inside, I cut it out so that we were not hitting in the bolts on this and then mounted it all up. So now with this mount, it is so much more sturdy. So now I have my sequential shifter actually mounted on there and I'm actually using it. I have the Fanatec CSL Elite Base on there, nice and sturdy and it all feels pretty dang good and it all works which is great and the other addition to this whole setup now is a VR headset that's over there and so with the VR with this setup it feels so good so much better than the Logitech stuff I will probably set it up and take you for a little spin really quick just to kind of show you guys how it all works <laughs> the Fanatic wheelbase with this Porsche wheel and then we got the sequential shifter here we're in a Miata here at the uh, Nürburgring on tourist day and let's go for a lap. We still don't have a clutch, but that should be just fine. All right, there we go. We're on our first lap. The sequential shifter feels great. This Miata feels nice and slow, but yet controllable. <laughs> so the amount of feedback that I get from this wheelbase is so much better than the Logitech stuff because it is so smooth. And mine, I think the belt has a couple, like, because it was sitting so long, the belt it has like a couple spots that feels a little weird, but overall it's really smooth and it's a lot more power. And actually this wheelbase has a vibration motor inside of it as well. So if I like start to understeer, like right there, I can feel a bit of vibration in my steering wheel. And so with that, I'm able to get a lot more information about what the car is doing 
And I know, like, you guys can probably see my shift lights, and with the VR, I can't. <laughs> but it it's just overall such a good setup. It It's so immersive. So yeah, we're just taking one lap at the Nürburgring. You can see no one's uh, really around us at the moment. Just hanging out in our Miata. So now we will just enjoy my mediocre driving. With this brace in the wheel, I am getting a lot more feedback from the entire system. And so, <laughs> oh my goodness. If I could stay on the road. Yeah, so I'm getting a lot more feedback from the entire system and like, it helps me better understand like when I'm starting to slide and catch it. I feel like a lot of not being able to catch slides is not trusting the wheel enough and letting it just actually rotate to where it wants to go. So, oh, this hill is so steep for this poor boy. In the carousel! So we are all by ourselves. Sliding a little bit. Sliding a little bit. A little bit more. <laughs> That is a big slide. We're good. <laughs> I mean, we stayed on the track for that like entire slide. Oh man. But we're up to the final straightaway. One of the things I like to do is to see how fast I can run into the pits. <laughs> so let's see, we're at 104 miles an hour. Probably uh, don't know if we'll get out of fourth, <laughs> but the pits are coming up. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. One lap at the Nürburgring. Nürburgring, ton of fun. Miatas, tons of fun. Rally cars, tons of fun. <laughs> With this setup, I am thoroughly pleased, guys. With this brace, it removes a lot of the flex that I was dealing with, with the Elite wheelbase. And and if you have a play seat challenge, the whole reason I had to do that was because the bolt pattern doesn't work and the only position you can have this whole like plate that rotates is like as far forward or like as close to you as possible, which means that like it was a little bit more prone to flex. So with this mount I made, <laughs> help me uh, practice a little bit of welding. It feels great. CSL Elite Wheelbase, also great. I love the shifter, shift lights. I love the smooth belt-driven technology in there. And then this wheel, I was originally gonna sell it because it's so expensive, <laughs> but I got a good deal on it. And now that I've played with it a bit, it feels really nice. The vibration motor inside the wheel itself adds a ton to the feedback that I get when I'm, when I'm you know, going around corners. I can really tell a lot better like what my tires and doing are doing and like how close I'm I'm pushing the car to its limit so yes it's expensive <laughs> feel a little bad for having it but I think I'm gonna keep it I just I like it too much I do want to get like a simple drift wheel that I can just throw on there so then maybe if I'm doing a little more refined of a car I can like do this but then when I want to go drifting I just throw on the lightweight drift wheel to have it throw around super fast Happy with the wheel, wish I had a clutch pedal with the load cell, but those work. 
As for the shifter mount, or the sequential shifter here, we bent it back. Luckily, everything works. So, really happy that that the good deal really was a good deal because I was worried that maybe it was such a good deal because the electronics were broken and I'd have to go in there and fix it. But no, it all works. And now that I have this like mount I made for it to be solid, it, it feels really, really good. I, I do agree with the Sim Racing Garage that I wish the springs were stiffer. So I'll probably go look for stiffer springs on that. But right now it's definitely usable, definitely fun. I love having it and it doesn't make me want to go play some rally games. We just played a Settle Corsa. Uh, that's a great game to pick up. I would totally suggest that. And there's a huge community around it. And I also do BeamNG for fun. <laughs> it's just tons of fun to crash cars. And then Dirt Rally 2.0 for all the rally stuff. I haven't really dabbled in a ton else, but those games are really solid ones. So if you're ever looking for one of those games or for like a racing game, those are, you know, for sure, fun games to get. You won't regret spending the money to get them. And I'm really happy with this setup. When I finally get around to getting the clutch pedal or the H pattern shifter, we'll bring you along. But for now, I think that'll do it. Hope you enjoyed some of this sim racing content. Uh, I might actually stream some sim racing. That'll be on Twitch, so if you want to go follow us on Twitch, then that's there. For now, goodbye.